Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. This show where we take user submitted videos, we critique them, we offer technique advice to try to keep people progressing in strength and further from injury. So without further ado, we're gonna get right down to it. This video submission is from Sem, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Uh, and he's doing some sumo deadlifts. Now, it looks like, Sam, you're able to, oh, there we go, let's get your video playing. Uh, it looks like you're able to create a good position, but you're losing it with how you initiate the lift. So, you're pulling into a really, really good position and then you're kind of jerking it, going too far back on the heels, and you're losing the position you created. So number one, I want you to be more patient and ease yourself into the bar just a little bit so we don't lose that position we create. It looks like you're, you're able to get there, so let's just not lose it. Uh, number two, I want you to stay a little more on your forefoot, and what I mean by that is the ball of the foot and the pinky toe. Remember, we always talk about those three points of contact, heel, ball of foot, pinky toe. We wanna to use that whole foot in the deadlift. Uh, and the other thing is I want you to avoid letting the hips drift back behind you. Uh, what's happening is we're getting into a little bit of a stiff-legged kind of position. We're failing to use the quads, failing to extend the knees before the rest of the system. So uh, we're gonna work on trying to pull the slack out of the bar by slowly lifting the bar off the floor, intentionally being somewhat slow for that first inch or two of the range of motion. Uh, and really making it a push off the floor uh, to make sure that we're using those quads and maintaining position. Hopefully that helps you, buddy. Our next video submission comes from Vasil. Now Vasil submitted some squats, some bench press, and some deadlift, so we're gonna rip through it pretty quickly here. The squats look very, very good, very, uh, you could say, Ukrainian-Russian style squat. Very extended, looking up, uh, very much back on the heels until the very bottom where we're getting a little bit loose, we're kind of collapsing forward in the hole. Now if you watch a lot of these guys squats, uh, this, like guys like Semenenko, guys like Yuri Belkin, they're very much on the line with depth, but that's kind of a purposeful thing. They're getting this far below depth and no more. Um, because in that style of squat and in that stance, it seems that if you get a little bit further below depth or a little bit further where you're able to maintain that sort of very, uh, very back on the heels, very posterior dominant squat, uh, things start to go wrong and you can kind of see in the bottom, everything shifts forward, we're kind of collapsing into the hole. So I'd like you to play with trying to be a little bit tighter. Uh, and a little bit more conservative on your depth, so we're getting just below parallel. We obviously want to leave no doubt in the judge's mind. We also don't want to, uh, sorry, sacrifice any tightness uh, or you know kilos on the bar for the sake of getting extra depth beyond what's going to be good in a competition. For Z for Vasil's bench press, uh, the one critique I have is that the elbows are getting kind of back behind the bar. Um, and the bar is out in front of them as we come down through the descent. So the one piece of advice I would recommend, or I would offer rather, is gonna be to externally rotate the shoulders just a smidge more and tuck those elbows in another half quarter inch just so they're ever so slightly uh, underneath or slightly in front of, and in front of I mean towards your hips, knees uh, of the bar. That is gonna allow you to make sure that you're nice and consistent with bringing the bar back off the chest and give the elbows uh, and the shoulders a little bit of room to play back as the bar comes back over the shoulders. Now Vasil said his deadlift uh, is his most troublesome lift. Uh, and here we have him doing some block pulls. Now it's pretty hard to tell with block pulls, uh, but the, the block pull itself actually looks pretty good. Um, but again, it's not necessarily a full picture because we don't know what his positioning looks like or what his positioning uh, issues are off the floor, which is likely for a sumo deadlifter where a lot of the issues are gonna happen. So the only thing I'm really noticing here is that we're losing a little bit of position. Uh, you're very much pulling back into the bar, much like Sam was a little earlier. So I would work on being a little bit more patient in the initial stages of the movement, purposefully easing the bar off the floor, if you will, uh, and making sure that you're staying nice and upright, not losing that great back position that you're able to create. Uh, without seeing your pulls from the floor, it's kind of hard for me to offer you much more than that, but hopefully that little bit helps and hopefully your, uh, your sumo deadlift comes along for you. Our next video submission comes from Batuan, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, uh, and it is a sumo deadlift, believe it or not. 
So the issues we're seeing here uh, are very, very similar actually throughout this, this, uh, this whole form check so far. It's a little bit rushed. Uh, we need to kind of slow it down and pull the slack out of the bar. And when I keep saying pull the slack out of the bar, what I mean by that is position your shoulder blades and pull your hips down to the bar. So we're creating tension throughout the whole system. We're tight through the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings, the back, uh, and not kind of jerking into the bar and then getting tight almost as an afterthought. Uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't unrack the squat bar without getting tight underneath it. So we don't want to be picking up the deadlift bar without getting tight prior to it. Um, if you get the chance, maybe try out doing some eccentric stuff on your deadlift. Stand at the top after locking out, very slowly lower the bar, maintaining very good upright position, good neutral spine angle. Uh, and just as you touch the floor, nice light touch, don't bounce it, don't bounce it. Don't bounce, I'm gonna repeat that a third time. But light touch on the floor, maintaining tension throughout, and then come back up. And that's what we want every rep to feel like from the floor. Because in the bench press and in the squat, we have an eccentric phase of movement or a lengthening of the muscles uh, as we go through the first portion of the range of motion, which allows us to create a certain amount of tightness uh, to load some elastic energy into the muscles and to prepare for the concentric or the shortening, the upward phase of the movement. When we're deadlifting, we don't have this. As, it, as the name implies, it's the deadlift, right? The bar's at a dead stop on the floor. So as a lifter, we're tasked with attempting to create all that tension before we pick the bar up. So what we want is we want to get to the point where it's almost as if we had just set the bar down in a very controlled manner before we pull. Hopefully that explanation makes sense. Uh, anyone out there wondering how to pull the slack out of the bar, hopefully that helps you. Uh, and hopefully, Batuan, that helps you with your sumo deadlift. Next up we have Igor, and Igor, believe it or not, is doing some sumo deadlifts. This is a, a very recurring theme, and maybe it's because uh, that's the thing that I'm becoming more and more known for is a sumo deadlift. More people want my advice on their sumo deadlift. Uh, just as an aside here, we're gonna try to get Connor Lutz on this show. Uh, so if you guys wanna submit any bench videos and have them critiqued by a uh, previous world record holder in the bench press, do it. Uh, we're gonna get him on here, we're gonna get him critiquing bench presses, uh, and we're gonna make sure we have uh, some more qualified voices, aside from just my own, on this show. Anyways, Igor, the hips are coming up as you initiate the lift, this very slight, but if you watch just as the lift starts, the hips drift just a little bit. We're, we're losing a little bit of what we could be uh, creating in knee extension, making sure that the torso angle stays the same throughout. So a little bit more quads off the floor and a little bit more patience off the floor. Again, we're kind of jerking into it. The whole theme of this episode appears to be pulling the slack out of the bar. So let's make sure we pull the slack out of the bar better. Let's make sure we initiate with a push. And our final video submission of the day is from Nizam. Hopefully, again, I'm pronouncing that right. I've been very challenged with my pronunciation uh, of people's names, so hopefully I'm doing you all justice. Um, we're doing some deadlifts here. Now, Nizam, he mentioned that a lot of times when the weight gets heavier, his hips shoot up a little bit. Now, I think the biggest reason for this is, Nizam, I believe you're setting your hips a little bit too low to start off with. What I'd like to see is things back, just a little bit back behind the bar. Try to create a little bit more of an upright angle in your shins uh, and push that weight back onto your heels ever so slightly to put a little bit more tension in the glutes and hamstrings. That I think is going to make your starting position a little bit more consistent so you don't feel that drift. Uh, excuse me. You're obviously going to be starting a little bit hips higher, but you're not gonna be drifting from hips lower to hips higher, which can obviously throw you off, especially uh, with heavier weights because of the inconsistency of that starting position. Lastly, from Nizam, we have a couple of squats here. And honestly, my only critique here is it looks like we could be just a little bit tighter in the upper back, especially as you change directions in the bottom of the squat. A lot of times what happens is the shoulder blades start to drift out uh, into some protraction, maybe a little bit of elevation. Uh, we want to try to keep those shoulder blades glued in. We want to keep those lats locked on. So we're pulling that bar into the back especially right as we change directions out of the bottom of the squat. So we're seeing a little bit of bar drift, sort of forward, pulley forward, uh, maybe be a little bit more pronounced with heavier weights, but honestly, most, uh, most of this squat 
looks very, very good. Just those couple of little things to work on. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If anybody's interested in a more in-depth form check uh, that you don't have to wait three to six months for, be sure to head up our website, calgarybarbell.com. We do have a paid form check service. And if you choose to invest in that, what you'll get is a full write-up including accessory movements, uh, in terms of programming suggestions, you'll get cues to help you fix the lift, uh, supplemental exercise suggestions for potential weak muscle groups, as well as a video of me kind of explaining my thought process and talking about your lifts. So calgarybarbell.com, we do have a paid form check service. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested. If not, feel free to submit to Form Check Friday. The email address for that is calgarybarbell2 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next video.